Hi folks, it's time for a TAT. We haven't done one in quite a while. I haven't really been doing a lot of videos lately. I've been hearing about it too. But this is TAT number 14. And I got quite a bit to talk about. I've got oh, eight or nine things to tell you about. And I will start on it right after this. Hey! Hello there. Okay, I want to start this thing off by telling you, as I know that a lot of you heard about the earthquake that we had here yesterday, it was quite a, a shocker. I, I guess I could, can say, even though I, it didn't really shake my apartment up that much, but it lasted what seemed like 15, 20 seconds long. And the uh, the worst part about it is that I was recovering from food poisoning I ate it's called conochi negro it's a, the black oysters ceviche day before yesterday and I shouldn't have eaten it Stella told me that uh, that's pretty much for Ecuadorians to eat <laughs> that you know you get used to it but I ate it and I got really sick from it I think the most sick I've been and since and since back in the good old days when I used to get sick from drinking too much. But anyway, so I was recovering from that yesterday. I was down flat on my back. And Stella came over to help me out with some things and and, and that earthquake hit. It struck at 12-12. And the worst part for the, uh, this earthquake for me was how it rattled Stella. And how it shook her up and it scared her, and I, I, I felt so sorry for, so bad for her. I, I, all I could do is tell her that it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So, uh, anyway, that was. I told her, I said, "Hey, that's the first time we've shared an earthquake." So, but anyway, it was a bad earthquake. I think the last report was 14 people in Ecuador were killed. One woman was killed in Cuenca. There was quite a bit of damage done in Cuenca. The earthquake actually happened outside of Guayaquil in the Guayas province. And I haven't heard about damage in Guayaquil, but I'm sure it was probably quite severe. So that's enough on that. I want to make an announcement. We're, I'm doing something here. I have a good friend, a subscriber of mine, his name is Jeff, he came up with an idea about creating a survey. I don't know if it's really important to do a survey, but I thought I would do it just to see where this thing is going, because this channel doesn't do that well. Um, as of this morning, I had 5,731 subscribers. And I know people that have been doing this a lot less than me that have a lot more subscribers than that. Maybe it's, it's my attitude, maybe it's my demeanor, my the fact that I just tell it like it is. You know, is my crook is my camera crooked? Looks like, does it look like I'm level? There, that looks low. But I was talking to Mr. Parker. He's sitting right there. But anyway, uh, I do the best I can with this channel, and I don't really, I mean, thank God I'm not dependent on it for an income. I'd be dead by now. But anyway, so we're going to do a survey. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. If you feel like doing it, go ahead. I know some people don't like doing surveys. I don't like doing surveys. But... It's a survey about me and this channel and so forth, and if you feel like participating in it, the link's in the description. And I'll be curious to see, you know, how, how the, I'll be curious to see the results, okay? All right, the so second thing I want to talk about is I got a text message the other day from somebody saying, telling me that the Social Security Administration was going to suspend payments for March 2023 
And so I started looking into this and I could not find any evidence or any proof anywhere online that Social Security was suspending Mark's benefits because of two forms that had to be filled out. Um, I thought I made a note on those forms that you can, they're, all, all they are is they're, they're forms that identify you and identify or that notify the Social Security Administration that you're still alive. And so the story that I got is that if, if Social Security Administration is just randomly picking people and suspending their payments until they get this, this benefit, I don't know what to think about this, folks. I looked, I swear to God, I searched at least an hour. Snoof.com, and just I through the Social Security Administration. I went everywhere. I could not find any clarification about this whatsoever. I did find, the forms do exist. Probably wouldn't hurt you to fill it out and send it in. It has to be mailed in. You can't do it online. So if you just do a Google search for... SAA or SSA benefit suspension, something like that, you'll probably find out what I'm talking about. The other thing I want to ask about, people keep writing to me and asking me about taxes. They ask me about CDs and banking and all this financial stuff. Folks, I'm not an advisor. I don't give advice. I only share my experiences here. I, I cannot give you financial advice. Please. I don't want to give advice on taxes. I don't want to give advice on CDs other than go talk to Avia at JEP because that's where I went. That's who I talked to. I had somebody ask me, we got into a discussion about Bank of Potentia and JEP having an account with Bank of Potentia in Miami and wanted to know why didn't I just have a bank account at Bank of Potentia. Well, I didn't because I went to JET first, and, and that's where I didn't even know about bank of potential. But the, the point is, I, I, I can't give you advice on taxes, CDs, where to bank, you know, what CDs to buy, CD insurance, all this stuff. I can't do that because one person, if one person comes back to me and says, I gave him bad advice, it makes me sick. So my view, my take on this, my objective here is to share with you my experiences. The next thing I want to talk about is getting your FBI report apostilled. Folks, <laughs> don't come to Ecuador without your FBI report being apostilled. If I had my way about it, every document you have would be apostilled. It's most important, when if you're going to come here and apply for a visa, you have to have your income verification, whether it's a pension letter or a pension letter from Social Security Administration, you have to have your FBI report, and it cannot be more than six months old, okay? And you have to have a state background check, and these all have to be apostilled. That means that they have to go to the Secretary of State for the, second, for the state report and it has to go to the Department of State in Virginia and get apostilled. That's your FBI background report, your Social Security Administration verification letter, your benefits verification letter. All these items have to be apostilled. Don't come here without having those apostilled. You're going to screw yourself up and you may not get your visa. Well, there, there's no may not. You won't get it. Uh, the next item I said, riding around Montes. So I finally did some, some video. I'm, I'm doing some video now from my car. And I, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separate video. I won't include the video <clears throat> in this one. I'm going to do a separate video of some trips that I did this last week in my car, driving around uh, Monte. Uh, <laughs> the other thing, locking yourself out of the apartment. This is really exciting stuff, isn't it? Um, if you lock yourself out of your apartment here, here's one way you can get yourself unlocked. Look at this video. 
It seems my door has a lock pick proof <laughs> mechanism, so they're rappelling down to my apartment. We'll climb inside and get the key. 150 bucks. This guy, this is a guy that's repelling down, I think it's San Marino. It's a building right down the street from where I live. So what happened is this guy locked himself out of his apartment, and the story I got is that he left the key inside the lock from inside the door, and the locksmith could not get this door unlocked. So he had to hire a repeller to come out and repel off the building and go in through his patio door to unlock the door from the outside. It cost him 150 bucks. I thought that was kind of funny. I discovered the other today, or yeah, today, that I'm going to put a link in the description of the video that, of all the videos that I posted, 233 videos, one um, is the most popular video. It's the, it's the Why Ecuador video that I posted over a year ago. It's had uh, 39,456 views since it was published. Big deal. I know people that have over 100,000 views in one day on their videos. But anyway, it's, um, now you probably know why I'm really slowing down a lot. <laughs> but I'll put a link to it at the end of this video in case you want to see it. But it's, I think it's the 10 reasons why I picked Ecuador. Why I chose Ecuador for retirement. That's the video. And it's the most viewed video, 39,456 views. Most of my videos get less than 2,000 views. So, uh, the last item I want to talk about, I'm going to answer an email. I want to read a short email to you. It's, um, I'm, I'm not going to mention this person's name out of respect for her or him, but uh, here's here's what she, this person wrote to me. It's, it's a woman that wrote to this. I watched your video about complications created if you have crimes on your FBI background check. Although I have never been arrested and have nothing on my FBI background, my husband of 24 years does. He has been arrested a few times, but has been found guilty twice. He got <laughs> arrested a few times. Welcome to the club. Uh, he got in trouble for selling marijuana in his early 20s. He never went to prison over it. He had to do six months in jail and a six-month inpatient drug treatment program. This charge was expunged 15 years later. Then a couple of years ago, he got a misdemeanor DUI. Do you think it would be more likely for his visa to be approved if I get my visa first? No. I figured it might create an advantage for him if his wife was already a legal citizen. No. We are taking an exploratory trip in December and plan to see Monta. Thanks. So, in the first place, I don't think your husband's going to have any problem. Okay? I had two DUIs on my FBI report, and I had an arrest. I had a felony arrest from 1973. Even though that case was expunged, because it never went to trial, never got, there was no guilty plea, no, it got dismissed, okay? You, I, I don't, even if his case was expunged, I believe the arrest will still be on the FBI report, okay? Folks, my best advice for you when it comes to something like this, if you have any questions about your background and about whether it's going to cause you issues with getting into this country, is to talk to an immigration lawyer. Talk to an immigration lawyer. Did you hear me? Talk to an immigration lawyer and get the facts straight. I know somebody here who recently was denied their visa. And the problem that they had is they had some stuff on the FBI report that caused some concern to the immigration officials. They called him in for an interview. He came in for the interview he admitted to the stuff that was on the report, and then he continued to tell them about things that wasn't on the report. Needless to say, he's not here. He's back in the country, back in the U.S. So, I'm talking to the lady that wrote this email to me. If, if your husband gets called in, he probably won't. 
I would say based on, maybe he will. Even if he does, just go in, be honest, answer the questions, yes or no, and don't offer any more information than anything they're asking you about. And you'll probably be okay. Now, I'm not giving that as advice, all right? I'm just recommending that, all right? Just be truthful. There are people that, that are here with a full visa to have a worse background than that, okay? So don't worry about it. Come on down and be honest. And be sure to get your report off of steel. I think that's it. So uh, thank you so much for watching this channel. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please hit me, hit that thumbs up button, okay? And if you didn't like it, bite me, like I like to say. And I say that with peace and love. And I will see you on the next one. Okay, ciao, ciao.